and welcome to Animal Weapons. In the animal kingdom, weapons are not about destruction, but about survival. From the sabre-sharp horns of the antelope to the different web designs of spiders, weapons are used not only to secure prey, but for defence against predators and to maintain a place in the social hierarchy. In this episode, we take a closer look at chemical weapons, those complex cocktails of venoms that enable species to secure and digest their prey. Australia is home to the world's most venomous snakes, and this one, the inland taipan, is the champion in the venomous stakes, and it lives in the continent's interior. Forty-five degree heat scorches Australia's arid interior. This is one of the most inhospitable places on Earth. Where food is scarce, weapons must be highly effective, for there are no second chances. The inland taipan can kill 250,000 mice with one bite but its rodent prey is scarce and elusive. It may wait weeks between meals. To escape the searing heat, rats and mice shelter in the earth's deep cracks. Here, they are safe from the elements, but not from predators shaped to invade these narrow crevices. For the rodents, this subterranean world is both a protective shelter and a trap. They have no way of knowing what lurks above the surface. Confined by the earthen walls, the rat's fate seems sealed. Venom's paralyzing components are already taking effect. Within a matter of moments, the rat will barely have a breath of life left. The venom also contains muscle-destroying properties that begin the digestion process. It's this potent cocktail of chemicals which makes the inland taipan the world's most venomous snake. You would think that such a weapon would make this creature invincible. But it's not. Only one of this clutch of 20 inland taipan eggs will survive to adulthood. It's not because they've been abandoned, for this underground chamber has provided for their incubation and safety. The eggshells are permeable enough to allow life-giving gases to be exchanged. Having fed from the nutritious egg contents, they emerge as miniatures of their parents. Even at this age, their venom is lethal. 50 times more toxic than the Indian cobra and equally potent as that of their parents.
Despite their potency, they are at great risk. From the moment they emerge, they are vulnerable to all manner of predators. They leave from many exits, disperse into what little undergrowth there is, and seek out cover. Their size makes them ideal prey for hunters of the skies. And even others of their own kind. This member of the clutch, only hours old, has caught the attention of a king brown snake. This snake feeds on other reptiles, even those that are venomous. While its own venom is among the most potent of all snakes, it's not as potent as that of the inland taipan. But the king brown has extraordinary means of neutralizing venoms of its prey. Out here, food is scarce and all must take what they can. The young Taipan instinctively attempts to defend itself. The King Brown's venom inhibitors protect it from the bites of other snakes. Its advantage is to be armed with both a defensive and offensive chemical weapon. Weapons are pitched against each other daily. It is this battle between weapon and counterweapon which ensures that no species has supreme dominance over another. For even the most fiercely armed creatures may themselves fall victim to predators with superior chemical weaponry. As the sun sets around the world, night stalkers emerge from hiding. They are scorpions. More than 600 different species of them are found from the tropics to the deserts. And all are carnivores. With a venom-loaded sting in their tail and a pair of menacing claws at their heads, they are armed with weapons at both ends. When tackling small, harmless prey, they use their claws, reserving their valuable venom until it is really needed. But those that prefer large, dangerous prey need a powerful chemical weapon that acts quickly and efficiently. Found in America's southwest, the desert hairy scorpion is one of the most venomous of its kind. Claws are not its most important weapon and are relatively small. It has simple eyes perched on its head, but doesn't hunt by sight. Fine hairs which cover its body sense the vibrations of nearby prey. But it's the scorpion's venom that gives it the ammunition to tackle dangerous prey. Known as the false spider or wind scorpion, this solifugid is neither scorpion nor spider, but closely related to both. It is aggressive and fast-moving. While it has no venom, its weapons are a set of four sharp and powerful crushing jaws. Relative to its body size, it has the greatest crushing power of any land-dwelling creature. 
it is the muscles which drive these jaws that the scorpion considers a delicacy. Given the opportunity, solifugids will kill and consume a scorpion. The scorpion acts quickly, plunging its venom-filled barb into the soft body parts. A creature of this size and strength requires multiple injections. The scorpion's barb is smooth and lubricated and can be used repeatedly without injury. Scorpion venom is a cocktail of nerve toxins produced in a pair of venom glands at the base of the stinger. It is replenished quickly. Within minutes, the solifugid is immobilized. The scorpion brings another of its weapons into action. Mandibles sharp enough to cut through the connective tissues of its victim. Ironically, the solifugid's weapon has not only been disarmed, but devoured. Scorpions are not only highly efficient predators, they're also true desert survivors, able to survive great extremes in temperature. And here in Israel's Negev Desert, it's not only the heat they have to worry about, but a harmless looking predator with a secret weapon all of its own. Hedgehogs are also out hunting in the desert at night. They are always alert, constantly sniffing and listening for any movement of insects or spiders. Even scorpions, which move silently, can't avoid detection, for most of the hedgehog's food is found by scent. Scorpions are juicy and plentiful. Hedgehogs are bold and not at all deterred by the scorpion's venomous weapon, for they have their own biological defences. They suffer repeated stings to the mouth and lips, but remarkably, the hedgehog is immune to the scorpion's venom. The same venom which is more than capable of killing a human. It is a form of invisible warfare where neither weapon ever totally succeeds in maintaining outright supremacy. In general, ants that scavenge and harvest rely on their sheer numbers to capture and overwhelm their prey. As individuals, they are ineffective. Their strength in numbers is their sole weapon in their fight for life and species continuity. But there is an ant that has become a highly successful solitary hunter. Its weapon is a chemical one. The Australian bulldog ant is claimed to be the world's most venomous ant. It is armed not only with vastly oversized biting and grabbing mandibles, but also with a sting in its tail. Where most ant colonies have armies of hundreds of thousands, bulldog ants have far fewer warriors, but each is heavily armed. They hunt individually or in small units. Their weapon allows them to attack large protein-rich prey 
that other ants cannot. Even this beetle, covered in its protective carapace, is not safe. The ant delivers an effective sting in the soft parts between its armoured coating. Then, almost effortlessly, the ant drags the insect, three times its own weight, back to the nest chamber, stopping to preen repeatedly. It's following a chemical scent trail, and its antennae must be spotlessly clean for successful direction finding. At this time of year, there are many hungry pupa to be fed. Beetles are a rich source of proteins and sugars. It's a meal that few other ant pupa would be granted. They attach onto the beetle, sucking any juices available. They themselves are tasty morsels for any predator that dares to invade this well-armed fortress. The blind snake is such a predator, and the soldiers attack. They are capable of delivering a deadly sting to the snake's vulnerable regions between its scales. The weapon of attack that secured the food has now been turned into a highly effective weapon of defence. But rather than defending themselves, these soldiers are protecting the future of the colony. Bees too are armed with a weapon designed to defend their societies. The ants approach cautiously. They arch their bodies into a position where they can plunge their stinger. Lacking the flexibility of the ants, the bee is unable to manoeuvre into a position where it can launch its sting. While its venom is potent enough to kill bulldog ants, the design of its weapon has severe limitations. Once a bee has stung, its sting ruptures from its body and the bee dies soon after. Bees can only use their sting in martyr-like defence of their entire colony, whereas the bulldog ant can sting repeatedly with no ill effect. In the world of chemical weaponry, it's not only the potency of the venom that determines its success, but also the versatility of its delivery system. In southern Arizona, there is an ant claimed to be another of the world's most venomous. Yet it is not for overwhelming prey that this pogo ant is armed with its chemical weapon, for it is a herbivore and forages for a living. Its sting is designed solely for the protection of its colony. Yet there is one predator not deterred by the ants and comes to feast on the streaming mass of pogos. The horned lizard waits almost motionless on the ants' trails, picking off morsels as they pass by. Ants and termites are its staple diet. The ants are swallowed alive and intact, their venomous stings still capable of paralyzing once in the lizard's gut. Remarkably, the horned lizard has a component within its blood which can neutralize the venom. Occasionally, the pogos take offense to the onslaught and orchestrate a mass attack. A small mammal would be paralyzed within minutes, but the horned lizard stands its ground. Venoms and toxins are complex chemical weapons that are further complicated by the fact that we can't see them in action. Well, one of the most perplexing venoms in the world belongs to an Australian forest dweller. The 
The Sydney funnel web is the world's most venomous spider. By rising up on their hind legs, they add leverage to a strike powerful enough to penetrate a human fingernail. Females like this spend most of their day in or around their burrows. She lays silken trip lines at night and descends to wait for passing prey. While she will eat small lizards and frogs, crickets and other insects are also on the menu. Movements along the trip lines vibrate down into the burrow, signalling that prey is within reach. As she ascends, the cricket moves closer, unaware of its danger. Having poor eyesight, she relies on subtle vibrations to decide when to strike. Her venom-laden fangs are fed by glands in the base of her jaws. A precious commodity, she will inject only enough venom to subdue her prey. Her paralyzing venom also begins transforming the cricket into digestible mush and easily overwhelms small and simple creatures like insects. It's a case of chemical overkill, for her toxins are also lethal to humans. The funnel web's main predator, the bandicoot, would seem at greatest risk. Yet, if bitten, it is only mildly affected. Humans and other primates are the only mammals susceptible to this spider's venom. The male's venom is five times more potent than the female's. Despite the male's lethal potential, it is he who has the most to fear. For funnel web mating, can be a fatal game. Males die within nine months of maturity. During his short life, he becomes a wandering vagrant with a sexual mission, trying to mate as many females as possible. He senses her pheromones on the trip lines. It's a potentially fatal attraction, for females are known to consume males after mating to provide sustenance for their developing brood. He must win favour with his femme fatale. To deliver his precious parcel of sperm, the female must be in the striking position. But there is a fine line between a sign of submission and a deadly attack. He retreats, then resumes his courting delicately caressing her front legs. This time she accepts his advances and holds her fire. Supporting her with his legs, he transfers his sperm parcel. His mission complete, this male escapes with his life. While there are over 30 different species of funnel web, it is only the Sydney funnel web that is so toxic. It remains a mystery as to why this creature possesses such a powerful and complex weapon. A 
Australia's red-bellied black snake spends most of the year prowling damp coastal forests and inland river systems in search of frogs, lizards, even fish and crustaceans. This snake knows just where to search for frogs, which are never far from water. They rarely have to move far to find the next meal and can survive within an area half the size of a football field. However, with the arrival of spring, there is a sudden frenzy of activity as males go in a frantic search for females. At this time, they travel widely and inevitably, the paths of many different males cross as they clamber over each other in search of females. Each will try to assume the dominant position, the one that can maintain its head the highest. For males that are unevenly matched, this usually results in the smaller males retreating without a challenge. Males of similar size will challenge each other until one becomes submissive. Combat such as this is rare among the Australian venomous snakes, but common among red-bellied blacks. While the bite is loaded with nerve-destroying chemicals, the retreating snake will suffer only a swollen wound and will not meet the same fate as their prey. Like many venomous snakes, this species is immune to its own venom. reptile world, venomous bites are the almost exclusive domain of the snakes. However, there are two lizards that also have venomous bites, and they both occur here in the southwest corner of North America. One of them is this Mexican beaded lizard. The other is a monster. A Gila monster. These lizards, like the red-bellied black snakes, engage in battles for mating rights. Nearly all bouts start with head nudging, with the resident male trying to lift his opponent off the ground. They soon develop into battles which seem to test the physical endurance of each animal. Each tries to get into the dominant position. Sometimes both lizards flip over completely with the dominant party landing on its back. Both may end up with bloody wounds. While venom would most certainly be delivered into the bloodstream, like some species of snake, the healers are immune to their own venom. This series of rituals may last for three to four hours before a victor is decided. This is surely the most vigorous activity that a healer will undertake in its lifetime. Healer monsters have a low metabolic rate and spend only 3% of their life out of their burrow. 
At top speed, it reaches 1.5 kilometers per hour. Other lizards of the same family can reach 25 kilometers per hour. With a performance record like this, most creatures would be vulnerable to attack. But the healer's coloration warns predators to stay clear or risk a venomous bite. By detecting airborne chemicals with their tongues, they seek out eggs and young in nests below the ground. These young pack rats are only days old and are totally incapable of defending themselves. The mother stamps her foot as a warning to the approaching predator. When the monster carries on regardless, she makes a hasty escape. Healer monsters can consume close to their own body weight in one sitting. Two to three meals such as this are enough to sustain them for a whole year. Once the healer has consumed the entire clutch of young, it heads back to its burrow for another period of prolonged inactivity. While the healer's venom is kept in store for defense, it is the fact that they are venomous that allows them to make unhindered raids on their prey. This is not a secret weapon. The healer's colorful markings are a clear warning to keep away or else. Animals that are armed with venomous weapons often advertise the fact to warn predators to stay clear. You would think that this is a highly venomous species. In fact, it's not. It is only mimicking the dangerous appearance of this snake, the Arizona coral snake. With a venom twice as toxic as some rattlers, it hunts other snakes. Snakes that are blind to its colorful body patterns. Its predators, however, can see them clearly and keep their distance. So effective is this warning system that it has been adopted by the coral snake mimic for its own protection. The coral mimic is not venomous. Its colouring is a warning to predators that may have encountered a venomous coral snake. Like the coati, this raccoon-like creature forages for snakes and other reptiles and is not colorblind. Just the sight of the mimic is enough to send it scampering. This defensive weapon, though not original, is an effective means of keeping out of harm's way. Colourful warning systems such as this work when predators can see what their prey cannot. Oceans are alive with colour. They identify members of a species, act as camouflage among the corals, and here too, they advertise creatures armed with chemical weapons. In Australia, there live some of the world's most dangerous marine creatures. One of them, although not much larger than a tennis ball, is armed with a highly toxic chemical weapon. This creature has enough venom in one bite to kill 10 humans.
It's here among the rock crevices and algae that we find the blue-ringed octopus. It is an active hunter, but is also hunted, and advertises its lethal weapon by flashing its iridescent blue rings. Its favorite prey is crab. Crabs, too, are armed with a protective shell and a set of large nipping claws, which is why the octopus needs a weapon able to kill quickly and efficiently. A thrashing crab half the size of the octopus could easily bite off a tentacle. The octopus delivers its fatal bite to the crab's vulnerable eye stalks. Its flashing blue rings signal its excitement. Octopus have special cells that receive rapid messages from the eyes and brain, instructing the skin to change not only colour but texture. Conspicuous one moment, the octopus disappears the next. It masquerades as a piece of floating seaweed. It delivers its massive load of venom from two salivary glands, each as big as the animal's brain. While the venom is a cocktail of chemicals, the component which paralyzes the crab is known as hapalotoxin, the front-line offensive weapon. Toxin is specifically for paralyzing crabs. There is another component which has little effect on crabs but is capable of killing any fish that dare to attack. A blue ringed octopus will retaliate when harassed, despite being at risk of losing a tentacle or two. Most fish are cautious. For anything that advertises itself in such a spectacular fashion must have a concealed weapon at its disposal. Like all octopus, the blue ringed has many weapons. It is a master of disguise and a contortionist, armed with a highly developed sensory system and a biting mouth. But what sets the blue ring apart from others in its family is its chemical weapon. A venom so powerful that it's able to paralyze and overwhelm dangerous prey larger than itself. A weapon that keeps carnivorous fish at bay, while this little predator of the sea reduces living crustaceans into piles of debris in a matter of seconds. Well, of all animal weapons, venoms are among those which are the most complex. Each venom has its own chemical formula, a cocktail of substances for many different purposes. 
They can paralyze nerves, explode blood cells, and dissolve muscle tissue. In fact, most venoms are a form of modified saliva, a modification necessary for venomous creatures to survive in a highly competitive natural world. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Animal Weapons, and I look forward to joining you next time. That's all. Goodbye for now.